So I, this is fairly light because I think you're all looks like you're fading after you had lunch. Um, so there's a lot out there. I think you've had. I wasn't here for the earlier talk, but I think you've had the whole talk about um, the evolution of these devices and repair versus replacement is always the question. I'm not going to touch on that because I'm just going to talk about the valve that we did. Um, certainly, the Pictanis mitral valve repair technologies. You've seen the mitral clip. You see the Korean. There's caudal implantation, there's LV remodelling, there's a lot of mitral valve repair sort of technologies out there. But now there's a whole bunch of mitral valve replacement technologies as well. And here's the list and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. The cardiac, the tiara, the tendine, the intrepid, the fortis, the cardio valve, the end valve and the mitral cyst. Um, and all this comes out of the enthusiasm from Tabby Town, but it's actually a very different beast that you're going to have to deal with, the mitral valve. It's, it's always going to have to be a larger delivery system. It's, uh, the valve anatomy is different. It's got greater dynamic change with the cardiac cycle. And you're putting in a very big device, and so the thrombogenicity is another issue that's sort of still going to be sorted out. And no one quite knows whether you can put a valve in a valve. You can put in a valve in a surgical put valve, installed valve but can you put a valve in one of these valves and can you take them out anyway i'm not going to sort that out for you i'm just going to tell you about a few things the lvat is a subvalvular ring it's a very important part of the assessment of transcatheter mitral valves and it's something that's extremely pertinent to echo um, and it's that ring that composed of the outlet muscular septum the membranous septum the anterior free wall and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve so there's the ring that's all important and it's the, uh, the crux of these valves and a big part of the challenge. So we, uh, well, the institutional experience was with transapical TAVI, so they chose a transapical system and the uh, interpreter, or the 12 valve, brought out by the 12 company, comes in three sizes. It's rotation agnostic, so you can put it in without having to clip one side or the other or be orientated for one side or the other like the tiara. It comes with um, two interconnected night null stents. So there's an outer and an inner area. So the outer cork's like that sombrero that I've shown you a picture of. And that allows it to conform to the dynamic anatomy and move and uh, avoids the distortion of the inner valve. And then the inner valve's just a stented tissue valve and they're connected by that night null frames. So there's two interconnected night null frames in this sombrero. And that's a picture of the intrepid there for you, in case you hadn't worked it out yet. All right, so we're lucky enough to get this valve. Uh, so we had a shot on pigs first. Um, and here's where I've sort of, we've killed off the pig and we've opened it up. You can see on the left hand side, the atrial side uh, of the device. And you can see that large sombrero extending out into the atrium and um, the inner ring. And you can see that gutter actually, which is a bit concerning, uh, but I think there's a gutter in a lot of these valves. So you've got to bear that in mind in terms of long-term anticoagulation and what you do. And then on the other side, you can see how that outer ring enmeshes the mitral valve apparatus, which is uh, what is gonna be caught within the structure. And on the, you can see the LVAT in that picture as well. Middly pig LVATs are slightly different. So we got to um, kill off a few pigs. We did kill the first one first We're by the valve, but that's okay, we practiced and got it right. Uh, so really, it's actually quite easy to put one of these valves in. Sounds hard, but um, uh, from an echo point of view, it's harder for the surgeons. Uh, but for us, it's just biplane all the way through. And there's several steps that you go through and they sort of comprise getting a trans -April delivery system in through the ventricle, out through the valve and into the left atrium. And then the next bit's getting the valve open within the left atrium and then positioning the valve in the mitral annulus and then deploying under pacing with this system and then guiding the whole thing out. So just five steps, away you go. I think the average time on these valves from insertion to deployment is sort of around 10 minutes. So it's quite quick. Um, we took it a little bit longer just because we're cautious. So how do you find the apex? Well, um, we actually found it with a CT. So they do a lot of CT modelling with these people, uh, mainly to look at their LVAT and the mitral annulus and shape and picking the size of the valve and looking at that aortomitral curtain and looking at the mitral angle. 
um, in order to plan it. But one of the side benefits of having all that sort of reconstructed CT is you can find a spot where you can poke through and have that good projection about where you think you're going to get in through the heart. Um, so they have a look at that, they have a marker and say, okay, this is where you need to go. We have a look with the echo as well, the transthoracic probe, have a look for the apex and go in the same spot and generally the two line up, which is quite neat. So this is the delivery system. It comprises of a sheaf, a dilator and a delivery system and a capsule. Uh, importantly, the delivery system is quite big. So it's about the size of my finger. Uh, so it needs a transapical or a surgeon who's familiar with transapical access to the heart. Uh, so that's uh, one of the reasons why we did it, because we had a surgeon who was familiar with transapical access. Uh, and the whole thing then gets guided through on that system and then the delivery system has to be guided out after the valve has been deployed. So getting a transapical system into the left atrium. Um, so here is the system within the left ventricle. And you can see, you've got to bear in mind that you've got a smiley face. Uh, so you've got to negotiate your way through the smiley face. So as you come up, you need to tilt the system posteriorly and, the, and be in the middle of the bicom view to negotiate the smiley mouth of the mitral valve. So if you're heading towards the anterior leaflet, obviously you need to tilt back posteriorly and you need to be shooting on that view. You can see that Pretty much the working view is that view when we tended to put anterior, posterior, lateral, medial on the screen to give us an idea of where we're going. And so with a little bit of tilt and a bit of movement, we managed to negotiate out through the mitral valve and into the left atrium. So here it is, slightly bigger and sitting up in the left atrium. Um, and then you get to expand the sombrero out inside the left atrium. Uh, so the device is actually recaptural to a degree at this point. Um, and some of the, this is the important bit, some of the delivery system is actually going to stay crimped within, or the valve's going to stay crimped within the delivery system itself. So the surgeon might have to twist the device for you then to see it. Not talking loud enough? Come closer. Okay. Um, so, is that better? It's actually this one. Oh, this one. That's a red herring. That's a red herring. Very good. Oh, there you go. Um, so they might have to twist the device for you to see it because it's not always visible in the X-plane view. So you can see that on this one, that on that AP view, it's visible and open, but on the uh, BICOM view, you can barely see the system. And so they need to rotate that for you to get an idea of the orientation of the valve and the whole thing's clear of the mitral valve apparatus. Um, you get a bit of benefit in these people because they've generally got uh, MR, so they've got a big left atrium, so you've got room to move with these rather large devices. Um, so next bit is uh, you've got to mark where you're going to go, so you have an idea of where the valve is and what parts of the valve you've got to map to what, and you have anchoring points, so you anchor some lines across the annulus uh, and then you use the coronary sinus because sometimes things drop in and out of view, between views, so this is um, a still and it's a bit easier to see what's going on, but we can you get an idea of where you are in relation to the valve from the coronary sinus. You get an idea from the annular planes which you mark on screen. And so once you've marked those lines, you get an idea uh, about where the device is going to go. And the language that they used was tilt, tilt, tilt. So we tended to tilt anterior, tilt anterior stop, tilt posterior, tilt posterior stop, tilt medial, tilt lateral stop and do that. And so once we're somewhat happy about where it was, then we put on some pacing, bring it down and get an idea of where we're going to go. Tilt, tilt, stop, tilt, tilt, stop. Does it look right? Oh, I think it looks right. Oh, pacing off. Oh, no, pacing on, tilt right, tilt left. There it is. Uh, so we're positioned. And uh, so that's the pacing just prior to putting the lines on to get an idea and looking at some of the marks. Uh, and then it's a matter of putting it in. So the interesting thing about this is that you're about to change someone who's got a pop-off valve to no pop-off valve, and you've got to move someone from uh, having no LVAT obstruction to at least some LVAT obstruction, if not dynamic LVAT obstruction. So it's a very different environment, and you're doing that on the back of pacing them and a bit of stunning, a little bit of air, 
so it is somewhat challenging uh, to manage their hemodynamics at that time. And you can see there was a little bit of air in that device as it's been deployed. So there's some rapid pacing going on. And they uh, so tend to say deploy, 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 and the device is deployed. Then it looks like that. Uh, so that's that one. So you can see the outer ring is grabbing the, um, into the left atrium. And you can see there's that gutter there and the interconnected night and off frames. And then there's the inner valve working in the mitral valve position. And the delivery system still out through the middle of the system. So it deploys around that delivery system. So now to get it out, you had a smiley face, but it's no longer a smiley face because it's a tri-leaflet valve. So if you want to go out, you need to go out in the middle. <laughs> so you don't tilt anterior or posterior at all. So you main, mainly aim to get out. Uh, so that's what we were doing here. So it's the reverse of step one, tilt anterior, tilt posterior, withdraw, withdraw. And so that's how you end up popping out. And that is the final product. Uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, so we have a series of final checks, uh, and they're the same pretty much as you would do with any uh, mitral valve roundup. Yeah, I told you about quick. So it's about position and function, leak, uh, mitral gradient, LVOT assessment is the most important bit, and looking at the AV valve. So I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. It was all smooth sailing, and uh, so you can see that we have had some <coughs> patients with um, some significant LVOT acceleration on the left hand side and a little bit of leak on one patient. So uh, fortunately that was, has responded to medical management. Uh, and you can see in these people who get CT and echo based follow up that um, that person there's LVOT looks wide open, which is quite neat. You can see the, the distortion of the outer ring when you subtract out the, the things and you can see the inner ring sitting inside that ring when you do a subtraction TT. So you get to land. Thank you.